Welcome to the Make Success a Habit podcast. Our show is designed to empower you by sharing ideas, strategies, and tools to achieve your vision of success. In our community, you will find support and accountability. Together, we make success a habit. Hello, Brian. Welcome, everybody watching live. This is not Jeff, but we do get to hear Jeff's smooth voice. In the, in oh, the nice. We have Brian Womack, who is a product. He, he's in product management. Actually, Brian, I'll let you introduce yourself. And but but I will say one of the first things I want to say is Brian is one of our longtime members of Team Two Twelve, and perfect for this this um, topic of organization because his main goal this quarter is to get organized. So go ahead, Brian. Yeah. Hi, I'm Brian. I work in product management for insurance company USAA, uh, which is really just making the insurance company knowledgeable about what's going on at the state level because it's a big machine. So they need to employ people like me to make it small for states. And I've been with Team 212 a couple of years. Like I was looking back on it two, three years and um, it's been a good experience for me. Making success a habit is really lived in 212 because you, you, every week, every Monday comes 6 a.m. and you have goals that you need to set and uh, great experience for me. So thank you for having me here. here. Here we go. Yeah, absolutely. And this topic is an important topic because a lot of times people set goals, they have big ambitions. And then, you know, the old saying, everybody has a plan until you get punched in the mouth. And <laughs> Uh, yeah, once you get punched in the mouth and you got to adjust and that's just, that's literally how it goes for me. Every single time I set goals, I set goals, I make a plan. I have an, a, a whole 12 week plan that I make and set for myself. And usually there's adjustments that I have to make along the way. Uh, one of the key things is if you're organized, if you have a good organizational system that works for you, it's easier to make adjustments along the way. What I've found is when I first started, uh, setting goals and trying to achieve goals, I had no system, so I would just, okay, I'm going to try this and then and inevitably fail and beat myself up over it. And so this this is more important. I think staying organized is more important to actually achieving goals than, than, than a lot of the other tactics. Uh, at least it shows you where you need to work on. So Brian, what's your experience? Just, you know, I kind of shared mine. What's your experience with goals and organization and, and, and where, take us to where you've been and where you're at now. This, this is good. So my, my main experience, so I'll, a lot just kind of going through school and in through college, I was able to sort of keep track of to-do lists always in my head. And I was always able to mind my own affairs always through my own like internal lists in my head. And I was able to make do with life without writing much down. I was not a great, I, I was never really much of a note taker. I wouldn't write things down. I would just think on it. Oh, and I, and I wouldn't forget. So I had this um, memory to, 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 but then, but then I got married and kids came along and not only do I have my own lists of things to do, but also the things that I do that I don't really want to do, but they're for my family or for my wife, or they're my, the list of my kids that they need to do that. I asked them to do it last week, but they, when touching base on it, they're like, you never asked. It's like, I'm positive. I asked. It's like, so there's now just like a multitude of lists and a list of lists. And it's impossible for me to keep track of it all. And I, I came to this realization um, about the time I joined up with Team 212, realizing that I need to write things down and to, um, and so I started writing things down and forgetting about it. And uh, that was an issue too, because I would write them down, but I would forget where I wrote them down. And, uh, and so now, <laughs> now I'll be like, oh, I wrote that down, but I didn't actually write it down anywhere that's of note of a, of a, of like a source of truth. And, um, and, and then, and then it comes along goal accountability with team 212. You mentioned about how being organized. So with goals is important. Well, get this, I, we would have, we have consequences, right? And so I would have these goals that I would be like, this is an important goal. I want to do it. And then life kind of punches me in the face. Right. And I forget that about that important goal that I wanted to do. Um, somebody, somebody in my, in my life named Paul B, right. He, he says, well, then you just didn't want to do it or you didn't prioritize it. You, so it's not a priority. And I'd be like, I, I would always be so frustrated by that because there's like a dichotomy of truth to it where it wasn't a priority, but it absolutely is a priority. And I would forget about these goals and I'd have to literally pay consequences for these goals that I wanted to do that I was doing everybody else's priority and I didn't prioritize my own goals. And so um, for, for, for a multitude of reasons, then, and then there was also weeks where it was like a restful week. 
And then I'd look at um, my goals and I'd be like, oh, I missed one. And that has happened time and time and again. So this organization topic, everything seems to come back to this nexus of being organized. When I look at things in my house, I, I realize, oh, if I was more organized there, I'd be more capable. When I'm looking at my work, oh man, I, I, I totally wrote this SQL query two months ago, but I don't know where I put it. And so I have to rewrite it. So there goes another couple hours of work. And so there's these opportunities that exist where I would have more time if I was more organized. And so I'm, I'm really tackling this head on this quarter. Actually, you know, what you didn't say was that this has been my yearly goal. Um, and, and, and I have like little, like I literally, I had a cupboard in my house that it started with, and then it was my kitchen sink, and then it was another cupboard. And all these things are still maintained. And so it's nice to see them maintained. Um, and then I stumble along the way because I, I had my car fitting in my garage, and now it's not so much. And so it's just like, oh, you know, these, these goals stack to each other and make me more capable to accomplish more goals. But yeah, organization is absolutely important to accomplishing your goals because it makes you more capable. And it, it less, uh, there's a, uh, there's less opportunity to duplicate previous work. And yeah. Yeah. You said a couple of things I want to actually drill into um, specifically not like le doing duplicate work. Uh, one of the things that I found myself doing for, a, for a long time, I think is the same, the same assignment or the same thing, the same activity twice, three times, because either I didn't remember doing it or I did it and it didn't, com I didn't complete it or didn't do it all the way because I, I never committed. And I found that actually, committing to doing it the first time and saying, hey, this is, I'm going to do this, whatever it is, helped. Um, but I want to drill in, down into a couple of things. You said at the beginning, it's a yearly goal that you had. And at the beginning, it started with one cupboard. So take me back to that. You know, it, you don't have to set the scene, but you can if you'd like. I'm thinking Christmas time. How was your cupboard? And then, you know, how did that take me to where how that progressed? And we'll talk about the, the bounce back moment. But I, I want to hear you know, where you were, where you got to, and then we'll, we'll talk about where you, where you went and how we can get back. Yeah, absolutely. All right. To the husbands in the audience, um, when I, my wife, it's my chore, my chore, my household chore to clean the sink. Okay. So I clean the sink. I do the dishes when I'm putting the dishes away. I always have this internal, like, I hate this drawer with the Tupperware drawer. I, I open it up and it vomits on me. And it's just like, ah, oh, crap. And you got to pick it all up. And, and, and so there's a lot of like redoing. And so I, I'm already frustrated. So I like kick it in and then I, and I throw the Tupperware, close the door real quick. And like, you know, okay, this is good for the next time I open this darn thing. And I did that for like years. I, I don't even know how long I did that. And I just accepted that always that regular battle where I, I would be like, man, why doesn't somebody just organize this darn thing? You know, I, I tell my kids, I tell my wife, no one would do it. And I realized I really wasn't being accountable to myself. And I was, it, I was the one that it impacted the most because I was putting the dishes away. And by the way, this isn't just a Tupperware drawer, but this is all drawers. And so to accomplish my, my goal of being consistent with the dishes, I realized I had a sub subsidiary goal that needed to be accomplished first, um, which reduced the effort to do those dishes. And that was to organize the Tupperware drawer. And so I organized it and it actually didn't take that long. And I found that when I organized it, I liked what I looked at. And so it's like, I'm like, I got this little pride in my kitchen. It's like, have you seen my Tupperware drawer? I'll open it up. <laughs> I'll show people when they come in, like, look at that. Isn't that nice? It's all, it's all organized. And so when I'm, when I'm putting now Tupperware is like the favorite thing to put away. It's like, oh good. It's just a Tupperware. I know exactly where it goes. Even when it's empty, I know exactly where it needs to go. And that's, um, that's, that's the story about uh, what started off this year with my Tupperware drawer. I did not know. I remember you talking about the Tupperware, but I didn't know how big of a deal that Tupperware door, drawer was. And the timing of it couldn't be better because y just yesterday we, we had that challenge with a Tupperware drawer. And, and you know, my wife was, a, she actually took it and she took <laughs> it and organized it and did it all. And we have it nicely organized and where it's supposed to go. Um, but the kids did the dishes yesterday and they, you know, were in a rush to play video games afterwards and they kind of just stack the tupperwares so then later i'm trying to get something out of that drawer behind the tupperwares and i'm struggling i've got like things in my hand so i call my son over to help and you know as soon as he gets the tupperware stack of tupperwares all together the biggest one from the bottom falls and shatters everywhere oh, literally no. <laughs> the worst case i mean not worst case scenario but like exactly what i was trying to prevent and um it is true what you said, though. It, the person that it affects the most is really the person that should be addressing it. What right now, mm -hmm. you know, if it's affecting me and 
it, other people are causing that, then maybe there's other, you know, there's other steps to take. But if it's affecting me in that moment, really, it's it's up to me to fix it. Because yeah. then if I fix it, the next person that comes along, it's not going to affect them. And if we all fix or organize whatever is in our way or affecting us in that moment, it, it really helps organize the world. Uh, as corny and cliche as that sounds, it's, it, it is kind of true. Um, but I want to, I want to also take a moment to acknowledge that that pride, that pride feeling or prideful yeah. feeling, it, it's so powerful. It's like that reward at the end of the habit loop, right? It's yes. Like the, and it's all generated from within. It's all from your own feeling of accomplishment, just doing that work. And, and I, I'm a big believer in how we do one thing is how we do everything. And you practicing this, this exercise is like the karate kid wax on, wax off, right? You don't know how it's applying to other areas of your life. And if you see that and we take it to the business world, right? And in, in, in your, your work life, t talk to me about your, tr your growth or, or, or not like your, your trajectory in your work organization as you're trying to organize your home life. How has that gone this year? Yes. So this year, this has been the first, my position at USAA has been the first job where I'm not, uh, my first staffing job where I'm not just working with myself. And um, my previous job, it was just me. And, and so I realized at that job that um, when I work on a project and, and I shelf it, that I should give myself enough of like an idea of where I left off with it. So that way, when I pick up on it, like I can actually pick up on it and I don't just stare at it. And it's the joke was that when I first wrote that code, only God and I knew what it actually did. And now only God knows. And uh, so I now I now leave a lot more comments. So I, as that's, I started commenting a lot more on my work. But when it comes to working with others, I started realizing that people would ask for something that I would, had already given to them and I'd already also told them where to go for it. And, and then I'd have to go and find it again. And then also with regards to, so I guess what I'm going with this is that I started adopting naming conventions. And that's something that was rather new. I know, right, I'm like 34, this is all new to me, to, to have all these things that everyone else has been doing the, the whole time. But um, I started doing naming conventions to help me identify what a file is. Um, oh gosh, uh, so there, it's just, it's just heart-wrenching when you've spent four hours on a, on a Microsoft Excel, like an analysis or, or a SQL query. And then um, it crashes, and and you and you look around and you realize, oh man, I didn't save it. I realized that I avoid saving things initially because that means that I have to commit where to put it, and that is uncomfortable for me. And so now, now I take this eat the frog approach. And when I first open up a, an Excel document or write a code, the first thing I do is essentially have like a naming convention slash mission statement. Like, what am I trying to accomplish with this work? And I will I will put it where it needs to go first thing, so that way I don't have to like make it at the end when I'm tired and lazy and on on my way out the door to get my kids to karate. You know, like there's a there's a million reasons why I'll leave work unassigned to or unsaved, and um, it only takes my computer to dying or crashing or or my kid accidentally smashing the keyboard to to delete a bunch of work, and all of those things have happened. So now I do it first thing, and that that I basically started doing this year too. Um, saving first and applying a uh, organization structure to it first. That is uh, start with the end in mind, right, Stephen Covey, and and really thinking about what your organizational system first. And, and, and it reminds me of a book called Getting Things Done. I almost completely forgot, but this is an OG personal uh, organizational uh, book. And I remember I read that book. That was one of the first personal development books I read, and he has you basically take everything that's in your mind and write it on either like a note card or a sticky note and it physically put it in your area and i think doing that exercise and seeing just how, how many things you have really shows you like the spider web of ideas now uh the, the transition from having this all these things out on the table to an organizational system is context of where you're at so he has you organize things by, okay, where would you do this, right? Is this work that you would do at your desk? Is this work that you would do at your office, it, it, you know, in your actual office? Or is it work that you do in the kitchen, it, you know, whatever, wherever the context is. And that is starting with the end in mind, right? Thinking to yourself, 
when I accomplish this, where do I envision myself accomplishing it? Am I sitting at my desk working focused on, on this? Or is this something that I need to be in the kitchen, like moving my body around? And um, really kind of contextualizing what it's going to look like, or not even contextualizing, visualizing what it's going to look like when it's done. Um, so I, I, I like that approach, Brian. Uh, I want to <laughs> I, I wanted to go into the eat the frog idea, and we'll come back to it. But first, I want to share kind of my organizational journey, if you will. Um, I, I, I moved around a lot in school. So I actually built a habit of knowing that eventually nothing would matter, right? <laughs> because I would be moving and none of the work that I did mattered. Eventually, I'm just going to throw it all away. Like I wouldn't save anything. I would keep things for a while and then I'd get tired of it. And I'd just say, I'm just throwing all this stuff away. And then um, I'd move and then we'd start school again and a whole new, I'd have to learn a whole new system. So it was a detriment. <laughs> it was a detriment, but it helped me learn the skill, you know? Um, and I, <laughs> the, I, the nothing would matter skill. <laughs> <laughs> well, it all doesn't matter. <laughs> I'll tell you what it, what, what it, how it really translates to is I, I wasn't attached to a system or okay. to a way of doing things. Um, because, and really, um, I, I, it sounds cliche now, and I didn't know I was doing it at the time, but it's kind of uh, learning from first principles, thinking to yourself, okay, what is true in this, in this environment? Because, and, and you know, not to get too deep, I'll, I'll get too deep for like 10 seconds, but when I would go into a classroom and I would assess the, the environment, I would see the dissonance between what I was told and what was actually happening. Um, what I mean by that is, I'll give you a concrete example. One, one year I had a teacher give me an assignment and she gave me a brown piece of paper. And she said, you're gonna write, your, you're gonna write this assignment here on this piece of paper and it's, gonna be, it's called your sloppy copy. And then afterwards you're gonna take it and we're gonna put it on, an, on an, another piece of paper and it's gonna be your, your, your second copy, your second draft. So I pro promptly proceeded to write as sloppy as I possibly could because that was the instruction I was given. This is your sloppy copy. That's, you know what I mean? That's, if you think about what the end in mind, okay, this is gonna be a sloppy copy. Uh, I, was, uh, I was not right about that. That was not what she meant by <laughs> sloppy copy. So it really helped me see that you know, because there's a, there's a difference between what something what somebody says and how things are actually done. And it really helped me in the workplace because there's a lot of rules that are set in place that seem like they matter. But at the end of the day, what really matters is usually totally different. Right. Um, oftentimes it's what matters. What matters for you is what matters for your boss or your boss's boss. That's really what matters. It doesn't really matter what everyone else says. About um, right. it, it shouldn't always be that way, but that's what I've found. Uh, so, uh, you know, taking that context in mind, I change organizational systems all the time. And what has really worked is this pretty much the framework or foundations or first principles of what I take with me in every organizational system. And I, you know, I, I've done one, the first organizational system that I think really worked for me was bullet journaling. And I yeah. still, if you're seeing the video, it's, you know, I just basically take a, what is this, three by five? I don't know what the size of this journal is, uh, the size of my head. And um, and I just create a, a running uh, log of my day. And then every day I carry, I carry that over to the next day. Now, now, I actually don't do this anymore because this, I used to do that. And now I do a digital version of this. I take this and I translate it into a program called Rome. Now, Rome is a note-taking system that basically... Um, I, I can't do justice. You should just look it up. But you you just take notes as you go, and it doesn't organize them by files. It organizes them or organizes the notes by day. And the uh, the idea is you can just write everything you write, and you can search at any point. And every time you mention it, it'll come up in a visual way where you can see it. Now, that worked for me for a while. I think I used it for like two years. But it became really complicated as it grew, and it became hard for me to maintain. And I transitioned that whole system over to Notion. So now I use basically Notion templates that I created that really take a lot of the best from the bullet journal method, take some of the uh, stuff that I learned in getting things done. Um, there's, there, there's several other, just anytime I see a productivity system, I'll read through it, I'll try things out, and whatever works, I'll lump into what my, to what I call my playbook, 
So my playbook is essentially, a, a, I guess, a, an amalgamation of a bunch of productivity systems that really make sense to me. And I, I talked about the first principles uh, of this system. And really, it's you mentioned it when you talked about your struggles is what is what is true, right? What is what is the the true version, right? If I take a note and I have an idea for a um, a, biz, a business idea or, or a product idea, and I write all of these notes for that product idea on a piece of paper, and then I transition those notes over to my digital system, in that transition, I'm probably going to have amendments that I'll make to that idea, right? I'm, I'm now typing that idea, and as I'm typing it, I'm, I'm adjusting what I thought that is now my true version. And I know that because I get rid of my old one, right? Like nothing Your sloppy is copy. Yeah, that's my sloppy copy, right? I learned that from third grade or whatever grade that was. So um, yeah, that's, that's kind of, you know, just to kind of get into the overview, I'm going to get into some tactics and, 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 and actual things, but I wanted to share the overview of how we generally stay organized. Um, the, you know, the next thing I want to do, Brian, is go into some of your challenges because I know you and I talked about it and then do some um, some troubleshooting and, and kind of and troubleshooting is probably a stronger word. I, I want to do some analysis on what you're doing to stay organized, what's working and what can you do to accomplish your goal. Like if you if you've been working on this all year, there is nothing there is nothing stopping you from accomplishing this goal this week. Like yeah. you can be organized this week. Um, I mean, there are things stopping you, but you could do it if you identified those roadblocks and you moved them. So let's let's do some of that. But before yeah. before we do that, do you have any kind of comments on my system and and everything that I said? No, I, it's uh, your the um, observation that this has been um, a long goal for me, and I haven't even I haven't gotten to where I want to be yet is. Res it resonates, and the I, I find that I'm easily accepting excuses on why I haven't done it. I will say that I'm avoiding it, like I'm procrastinating. You know, it's like a it's like a difficult thing that I don't really know how to do. So I'll just learn about how to do it, and then I'll do it tomorrow. Like, and that that tomorrow has lasted for a long time. And I'm looking over at my uh, task wall, and I and I'm seeing a note card that I wrote in March, and uh, it's now October. And so that's that's like a, oh man yeah this is this is a this is something that I need to just be actionable on and I think that's when you were sharing with your process yesterday um, with our call I, I took some screenshots because I was thinking you know this is it's time like it's real time to just to because a lot of a lot of things that I'm finding out about myself is that I uh, I accept inaction when I should be more action oriented and I'll, I'll be content with inaction. I'll, I'll do this like analysis paralysis and I'll learn about something and then I'll forget all what I've learned and then not actually do. And cause it's, it's hard to do. And, you know, riding bike the first time you fall and then you get discouraged. And I think that's happened quite a bit. And so I'm, I'm eager to go through this process. So a lot of the obstacles, I think is just my mentality on it and um, accepting the excuses when I shouldn't be. Yeah. Um, I agree with the mentality part of it. One of the things I, I vividly remember the pain I would feel doing my first websites when I was, I had just learned web design. I knew how to do it like on paper and I can do projects, but the first clients, the first few clients, I remember the pain that I felt just getting up and to, to sit down to do it. And then as I went through it, physical pain in my stomach that I would feel. And <laughs> Um, it wasn't, you know, not to say like, just power through it, but more bad burrito. <laughs> no, no, it was definitely like uh, resistance for sure. And, uh, so I'm not saying power through it, like just, just go without, without, um, feeling it. But I would say that feeling that you're feeling that resistance means that it is something that you, that is important for you. Right. Because if, if it wasn't important, you wouldn't feel that resistance. Um, so just and more of an encouragement when you feel that feeling, don't run away from it, go towards it. Um, and, and yeah, you'll get through it. So let's, let, let's, let's get into it. What I want to know how you worded your goal. And I, I, I have seen it before, but let's share it here with everybody. What is your goal specifically on organization? How is it measurable? Just read it to me. Oh, okay. So, uh, well, so my goal is, um, I am an organized, um, 
well, maybe I should have it more memorized. I'm, I'm having like stage fright right now. Okay, I'm a clean, organized, personalized. Okay, I'm an organized, clean, organized person, and I live in a clean, organized, and personalized house. Okay. Um. So, and I live a clean, organized, and personalized life. So those that it's a it's a three part goal of being clean, of being organized, and then adding my own flavor and touch to things as I go along. Okay. Um. Let's talk about key performance indicators. We'll come back to the wording of it because because there's probably ways to streamline, but I'm sure this kind of encompasses a lot. Uh, so I think this is good uh, to start with. So key, yeah. key performance indicators. When you think about well, what what are your key performance indicators that you've thought of? Yeah. So when I walk through people's houses, um, there there. I, well, the ones that I'm trying to model after, not not the ones that are, you're like, oh, well, wow, that's that's what they live with. You know, it's like I'm not judging on them. I'm, I'm, trying, I'm just trying to make my own life better. And so as, when I see people have like family photos and things like that framed and nice and canvas things and, and paintings that are aesthetically pleasing, I want that in my house. So I when I first moved in, we had bare walls for like three years. And so even 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 right now in my office, uh, I, all of these things I've added this year to personalize it, to to make it more appealing to me. Uh, I've added photos on my house and my walls, and so those were initial personalization indicators. Um, in in terms of key per, key performance indicators, I guess I have moments like rooms. So. Um, to uh, the example of the cupboard, that was a key performance indicator. Right now, goal is my cup cabinet to similarly do that, and then next would be my pots and pans to 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 organize that. Like all of these cabinets should be similarly. I tried to rearrange my cabinetry to be more pleasing, and it hasn't worked out. So it's like, okay, well, uh, why? And I guess the measuring of 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 some of this is does it make it easier for me to keep organized? So the key performance in indicator would be a consistency of it. So like I, I put that picture up, but it's brown and I want it blue. And I'm like, do I still like it? Like that kind of a thing um, is a measurement. Like, do I like it after a week? Do I like it after a month? So when it comes to organizing my room or organizing my kitchen, um, the cupboard, the, the Tupperware cupboard has been lasting. It's had a la it's held lasting organization. And our cups, we rearranged so that my kids could reach them, but it's combined with our towels and it's just not enough room in the cabinet. And it's always blowing up and it always brings me not joy. You know, that Marie, whatever, the Japanese organization lady, um, she's like, does it bring you joy? No, my cup cupboard brings me terror. I don't like opening it. I pretend it's not there. So that's that's a measurement of um, the cups. And so even after reorganizing and taking a lot out, it's still not bringing me joy. So that um, additionally, my, my oh yeah. So, I mean, that's some examples of how I'm, like my, my, my master bedroom, there are laundry is something that's an ongoing um, chore that needs to, I think it's just a matter of um, having proper systems in place. So it's a big goal, you know, clean, organized. And, oh, and then personally, just on terms of like uh, my work, my work folders, I have actually those now bring me joy. Um, I had an opportunity this past June. To, I got new assignments. And so when with my new assignments, I started on off on the correct foot. All of my projects have been saved correctly. In fact, my team is modeling after what I'm doing. So that's pretty cool. And so there, there's a lot of uh, success happening there. Um, when it comes to my personal like computer side, like this one, uh, okay. my desktop not 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 much joy. So there's there's some opportunity to reorganize. So it's it's a it's a big goal for me. Um, the measurements are complex. I think I could I could whittle it out to being a bunch of simpler goals that um, are less. Um, that are more specific rather than just saying I live in a clean, organized, and personalized house. Like why, what, and um, to have those goals articulated. Um, you know, my my office is clean. I don't have to step over items. I know where things go. I know where things to find things, even when um, not like labeled. Like those um, those are all those are all necessary. You know, having having young kids is only an excuse for so long, and um, I'm I'm not accepting it anymore. <laughs> Uh, there's a lot to unpack and we are going to unpack it all because good because uh because I, I feel like i've been there and i i go there occasionally some of these uh emotional places that you mentioned w what is the opposite of terror peace peace okay perfect that's that is your goal because i listened to everything and i was hearing you and I want I wanted to ask you what's the feeling behind everything and you said it you said I feel terror it was actually yeah. right after I thought about asking you it's almost like you psych psychically heard my thoughts 
and discharred, can, adjo- uh, discharred, chaotic. Yeah, um, and you want to be derailed. Peace, peace is a good. Let's start there because I think that's very. Um, peace is a feeling, an emotion that's easy to tell when you feel it, and it's one of those things that actually takes inaction um, to feel peace. Right. The more you, the it just in general, like if you think about a feeling of peace, you're generally not moving, right? You may be moving. There is some peace, but like it's not fast moving. It's it's slower paced. So everything that you described, and even the word terror itself, is a faster paced word and in a more chaos. All of those words. And what I'm hearing you doing in your strategy and your tactics is using terror in a way. <laughs> Or using that energy to try to combat this. You're kind of fighting fire with fire in a way, and you're just burning your house and yourself down. Yeah. And I, I know this is kind of, yeah, sometimes I go all out there, but like you, you, you know what I'm talking about, right? Does that resonate? Yes, it, um, it resonates. I know that was a hesitation of a resonate of, a, of an agreement, but yeah, it resonates in terms of using uh, the negative energy and emotion to to try to create something positive. Yeah, yeah, and um, it's actually one of those things with accountability that gets um, construed. I don't know if that's the right word, but so, you know, I hear people think about accountability as a negative thing, and I don't think it's it is the, the case at all. But that's a separate conversation. Um, w- w- when you talk about the feeling of peace in your house. And and you know some of the some of the the physical descriptions of it, like having your cupboards and, and your your laundry organized, having your work folders organized and your personal files organized, that seems like a, a result or a consequence of a of a personal feeling. Like if you were an or so kind of going back to your goal, if you were an organized person, you wouldn't need to organize your cupboards and your uh, and all that stuff. So looking yeah. at your goal and just to try to make it more memorable, make it more specific and, and less in your head and more in your heart, like saying that your goal is to be an organized person. Now we can work on that. That's just the first sloppy copy, but I am an organized person, right? That's, that is very specific and it's, yeah. it, it is, it is clear. Now, what if you felt at peace with the way your life was, um, with the way your life was, I am at peace with the way my life is. Does that sound more real or less? Does that sound further away from your goal or closer? Uh, further. Okay. So, um, so or- well, let's let's uh, let's let's nitpick that because there's um, yeah, you said it yourself. Peace is uh, is, is is resulting in inaction, mm-hmm. and if I want change, um, can I be peace? Can I have peace with the change? Like, well, is that what you're talking- arguing? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, well, we're talking about the end result. We're not talking about the journey. Those are two different things, right? Okay. So if the, if the end result is peace, there may be a journey that isn't peaceful. Not to say, you know, the opposite, but just saying, like, the journey to peace doesn't have to be peaceful. The destination, what we're talking about, the goal right now is peace. Uh, and yeah. and it is, does that resonate, like, the end result? Yeah. That, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, well, so there's been a lot of um, – I've accepted the chaos of – of all of what I know, what I'm currently in. And when I, every time I look at the obstacles to my goals, I mean, I'm not uh, exaggerating every single time. Um, it's because I don't have the, I haven't achieved the organization to realize them. And so, you're not there yet. cause I'm not there yet. And so that's, that's essentially the impetus of this journey to, to really, um, and so, I mean, I guess, it, so, so in terms of it, yeah, and it's a goal towards peace. And um, so, yeah, that's, that, that definitely, that's where I want to be at, to be at peace, but also to agree with what I'm being at peace with. So not necessarily just settling on, on it. So not just being at peace because I, uh, because I can't, or, I, or because I, I chose not to, but, um, but being at peace because I've accomplished it, what I, what I'm setting out to do. Yeah, it's going back to what we talked about with the kitchen, right? And you know, Mr. Miyagi says, "Wax on, wax off." You you clean your you clean your cabinets, or your or your Tupperware drawer. The Tupperware drawer. And you feel at peace, and yeah. and then that feeling at, is a reward in it of itself. 
So now let's go back to that journey that you went through cleaning that drawer. Um, <laughs> was it, was it <sighs> right, <laughs> right. Was it peaceful? It, no, I was, I was, uh, I was in a bit of a fury. I was right. like, I am sick of this stuff piling out, and and then, um, and then, and then it was peaceful after after the initial, uh, after the initial action, like after the initial, okay, I'm doing this, and I'm doing this today, and I'm not going to stop until it's done. And then, and then it was more or less like being a thoughtful, like, how is it going to be helpful? Like, should I have the small ones in the back or in the front? You know, like kind of like I'm trying to understand so that way, because I've, I've done it, I've done it before where, you know, I'll organize it and then I, and then it doesn't stay organized, you know? And so it's like, well, what, what, what am I learning from those times and what can I apply to this time to make sure that it's consistent? So, so here's what you did. Here's what you did. Yeah. You, you addressed the terror. Right. So the terror was hounding you and you addressed it with some rage, which is, you know, <laughs> just knocked it, knocked it out. And then you let go of it. You let go of the terror and then you went to work. Mm -hmm. And that work is what you want to be doing. That first part, that terror part, addressing that terror, whatever the negative, like to people watching, whatever the negative part or the opposite part of what your goal is, when you're addressing it, you want to do it like this. Right. You want to look at it and then just get get through it. And it doesn't. First of all, I, and I'm not saying you did, but it should not, you should not take anything out on anyone else or yourself, but um, like not even yourself, right? Like if, if you're beating yourself up for getting to that point, then don't, don't do it. Stop beating yourself up. Waste but of energy. It, yeah, it's a waste of energy. But if you find yourself beating yourself up, if you're in the middle of it, don't beat yourself up for beating yourself up. Just get through it. <laughs> Just get through curse it. Curse of loop. Yeah, just just realize you're doing something you don't want to be doing. I'm beating myself up. Get through it now. OK, you get past that initial part. Don't take it out on anybody. Just get past that initial part. Now you're getting to work and you said a couple of really, really important things. You said, I look back at the previous times that I've done it and I said it didn't work. What didn't work and how can I prevent that from happening? Um, and this is this is an exercise that I actually take. I do in all my goal settings. So when, in, when I do my yearly goal setting, I look back at what I've tried, what didn't work, and what I'm going to do differently. So asking yourself, what will you do differently this time? Important mm -hmm. step. Uh, step number two is uh, enjoying the work, right? Like it sounded like once you got to it, you were enjoying it. And the reason that's so important, it's more important than people think. Because if you're not enjoying it, you're going to have to pull yourself in to do it every time. But if you can find enjoyment in the work itself, then you're not going to have to pull yourself to do it. You're just going to do it because you're going to know that, hey, once I get past that initial terror, um, and I'm going to call it terror, but it could be di different for, for every goal. But once I get past that initial resistance, then I'm going to enjoy the process. And to me, um, yoga is that way. Like I, I, I hate, well, I don't hate it. Nah, you know what? I, I take it back. I used to, I, I enjoy yoga now, but I used to dislike starting that process. But yeah. once I was, uh, yeah, you know what? Once I was done with yoga, then I felt good about it. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> does that resonate, Brian? Yeah, it, it resonates. I was what um, I think we've had this conversation before about the work. Um, the the what what really motivated me? What really motivated me was convincing myself that this will make this will make my other job easier. So the, the visualizing that like, if I set this up and I set it up correctly, this is not gonna be a problem anymore. And that I found myself falling in love with that vision. And so it made it really easy to, to, to slow down when I needed to slow down to, to, to sort of organize it with the, I ended up doing it by the ones that are, are used the most, you know, have those in the front and because that makes the most sense and, and, and putting the ones that are, are harder to get, like, cause they're, you know, in the cupboard, there's a hard to get spots. And so those are the ones that are going to be the ones that aren't used the most and then figure out where everything else goes. And I mean, it's not perfect. And so I, I, I kind of acknowledge that, but there, the, the, the cupboards, the cupboard, it's not like I'm going to hire a carpenter or change up the cupboards. And so it's accepting what can be the best of the scenario. So that it was not like, I, I didn't like enjoy it, the work, but I enjoyed the product of that work. And, mm -hmm. um, and I've continued to. And so it makes it even more like even now, like like I mentioned, it's it's my favorite thing to put things in because it it works and it's and it's maintained. It's um it's done its duty and it continues to do it. Your um 
you can enjoy the work even if you don't. You can, even if you don't. My dad um, was, we, we always had different businesses, but one of his more successful businesses was car detailing. We would go um, car deta detail cars. Uh, and and he, my dad was, he was successful because he was good. He did, like everyone really, really enjoyed his car detailing. But me, because I had to do it with him, right? And it, yeah. was, it was a lot of like, you know, I, without getting into it, a lot of degrading and then like, that's not good enough. And you got to do it this way. You got to do it that way. Mm. And that carry that type of, when you're going through the process and that's what you're hearing, regardless of whether it's from someone else or from yourself, it's impossible to make that process enjoyable huh. because you're going through it literally with any time you're enjoying it, that those thoughts come up right now. If you were to, if, if if you were to do that same activity and not have any of those thoughts coming, and let's say you have some music playing that's enjoyable, right? Like for me, it's washing the car, detailing the car, but for you, it could be cleaning your kitchen. If you're enjoying that moment, that it doesn't mean that you want to do this versus something else. It means you're doing this kind of like your cupboards. This is what they look like, and I'm going to enjoy it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but but I wanted to, I think I got it. I think I, I think I figured it out. You want to be at peace with your organizational systems. That's yes. what you want. Because I yeah. hear you. Yeah, as you're going through this, you're not trying to organize. You're, you're not trying to be organized, honestly. You're trying to feel organized because your system is organized. Because yeah. a lot of the, the stuff that you're talking about with your files and folders, they're out of sight, out of mind. But you know that if you have to go look for something, you're not going to find it because you don't feel organized. Yeah, less with, um, yeah, um, yes, and uh, yes, that's a lot of yeses. Okay, so there is, uh, I'm just going to kind of cut to the chase because there, there's a bunch of key performance indicators that we could go through for this type of um, goal. But you know, now that we know that it's about this feeling of having a system in place, one of the questions is, and being, at, being like knowing you can access your, your stuff, one of the questions that that I would encourage you ask yourself as a key performance indicator is how do you feel about your stress levels just in general your stress levels like are you feeling overwhelmed are you feeling disorganized are you feeling like in general when you think about the word stress what what comes up and if you're at peace like and you can you can do this on a scale of 1 to 10 1 to 5 however you feel yes or no uh uh, low, medium, high, but something that you can consistently report your feelings of of organizational uh, stress on a daily basis, it, that's a good key performance indicator because even though it's just self-reported and maybe not scientifically accurate, it is the most important key performance indicator in this in this goal, right? Like how you feel about your organizational system. Does that make sense? Yeah, it it does. Um... Yeah, it makes sense. Break it out by categories of like rooms, chores. Uh, well, that's you're you're taking it even further, right? That's now we're talking about breaking it down and like actually saying, okay, what's week one, week two, week three? We could do that. That's a whole other podcast. Is how we and I, and I think maybe even you and I can have a follow up conversation about that uh, of actually breaking that goal down into what do you do for week one, week two, week three? But what's most important, what you've what, what we've gone through on this conversation is start with the end in mind. What is it that you really want? And, it, you know, you, what you were doing and what you've been doing all year, it, not, not really because you, you, you got a couple of really good ones. But the way you talk about this is you're, you're attacking the symptom, right? Like my, my covers are dirty. My room is a mess or my walls don't have anything. Whereas the, the, the actual system itself is what you're looking for in creating that system, having a system that says, okay, on Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, this is who does the kitchen, Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, this, Sundays is family day, whatever. Um, that's your home organizational system. Then mm -hmm. for work, it's Monday through Friday. Here's what I do for work. Saturday, here's the follow-up stuff. And then Sunday, here's my prep for work. And then you have another organizational system for your personal stuff. You know, here's what here are my personal activities that bring me joy that I'm doing that I enjoy. Here's the 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 mission of Starfield that I'm going to be doing this week or whatever. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, having that system that's your goal. And we could talk about that, but that yeah. I, I think getting that clarity is really important. Yeah, that's fair. 
yeah, because that's that's really all that meant. Because once I once I have a system that I could commit to and be satisfied in, I'm happy to do the work um, mm -hmm. and maintaining it. Uh, but as such, uh, for many reasons, um, I'm not going to shed on others. I mean, even myself, I, I I'm I'm not consistent on on everything that I want to be consistent on. And so just in that alone, I could I could focus on on why and and address address it. Yeah. Um, I, this is totally different than what we normally do, um, on a podcast, but I, I want to touch on the tool for the week, um, because this kind of falls into, into what we were talking about. My tool is called, um, where did it go? I had it here. It is, uh, do delegate delete, which I'm sure you've heard before do delegate delete. I believe even, um, uh, getting things done had a version of this, but here it is. Here's what you do. Ask yourself, where is your time going, right? That's the first question is, if you're trying to get organized, you first wanna find out, take stock of, of your resources. Where is your time going? So look at a full week, either Sunday through Saturday or Monday through Sunday, and document everything that you plan on doing for that full week, right? And then as you go through that week, in a calendar, uh, in a calendar, also fill in the the actual. So basically, you're doing your budget time, but you're budgeting your time. You're saying, here's what I'm going to be spending my time, and then as you go, you're going to do your actual time. Here's where I actually spend my time, and you're going to find that there's going to be a discrepancy. Unless, um, I mean, if if not, let me know what you're doing because I haven't found <laughs> I haven't found it to work perfectly. I did try one time, almost tore my hair hair out trying to make it work perfectly, but. That discrepancy, look at those items that aren't getting done. Are they important? If they are important, we're going to include them in this exercise. If they are not important, consider removing them from your calendar completely. If there's a meeting that you're not attending every week, that you are that you're just like, I just never get to it, but it's in my calendar, take it out of the calendar. Okay. So now you have a real list of your actual to-dos. None of that stuff that's kind of committed to and you don't do. None of that stuff that you should be doing and you're not doing. Just, or actually, you should include the stuff that you should be doing and you're not doing. Include that in this list. That's a big list. Yes, it is a big list. And you're going to make a diagram with four boxes. On the top left-hand box, you're going to mark it important and urgent. Not important. Oh. No. Top top left is important, urgent. Top right, I don't know if we're backwards because of the mirroring in the window, but let me just speak instead of moving my hands. Top left is important and urgent. Top right is important and not urgent. Bottom left is not important, but urgent. And bottom right is not important, not urgent. Not important, not urgent. That All that stuff needs to either be deleted it should just be deleted. You should not yeah. delegate anything that's not important and not urgent. Stuff that is not important but urgent, you may need to do, right? There may be things that are important depending on the consequence. But if the consequence is low, then it's probably probably not urgent. The areas you want to focus on are the, the top half, the important things. The stuff that is important and urgent, those are the things that if you don't get it done, they're going to take your house or you're not going to like, let's say you have to put gas in your gas tank. That's important and urgent, right? If you're low on gas and you need to go somewhere, uh, those types of things go, go in the top left-hand box, non urgent, but important things go scheduled. You're going to schedule that stuff. Now that you've done that, now you have a diagram with all of your items. You have the stuff that you're going to schedule and that goes in your calendar. And then you have the stuff that you need to just do now. And that gets done. It's important and urgent. And if it's something that's important and urgent and you don't have the capacity to do it, find someone to delegate it to. Delegating doesn't mean just, hey, you go do this for me. It could mean hiring somebody that that, that can help you organize like, or, or understand what you need to do. That, that part may be that part that you need to delegate. But delegate it, do it, get it done. Now, how do you do those things, right? When, okay, so I'm already out of time. What am I doing? And that's where time blocking comes in. And I guess this is another tool, but we'll just call it a bonus tool. Um, so, so you have all your items. And now for the when you're looking at your calendar and you know what your actual calendar looks like, fill that calendar with blocks of time where you're focused on these items. 
with blocks of time that are dis distinguished between like personal focus. So if I'm if I'm focused on personal items, maybe I just get all my personal stuff done in one block of an hour. And then my work items are done in a completely different block. And that prevents the context switching back and forth whenever you're going from personal activities to work activities. Uh, doing that, just that alone will help get some clarity and some insights into where you need to make adjustments. You might find that, oh man, there's way more on my calendar than I can do. Well, maybe it's time to do an 80-20 analysis and see what's really important. So Brian, have you ever done one of these? Yeah, I've done I've done both of those. The the first thing that you mentioned that you were talking about, I, I've heard it referred as um, Eisenhower matrix, and it's been um, so that's that's a good keyword to look into for further further analysis of it. And knowing and doing are different things. So knowing about it and doing it, um, I have done it. I haven't done it consistently, but I uh, I have definitely. Um, it's 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 a way to clear the clear the air on what what is what is important. So whenever I feel like I I'm kind of feeling like chaos and chaotic and there are a lot of things to do, that's when I have done the Eisenhower matrix to to look at what's important and not important, and urgent and not in, not urgent, and and to be satisfied with the planning to do later, um, and then to actually try to see about delegating and then the absolutely doing what needs to be done then and there to focus on what needs to be done first on the one thing that will actually make an impact for the day. And then once that's done, next thing that will make an impact for the day and to, to prioritize in that way. So that's something that I have been putting into practice. The other, the other thing um, that you, that you mentioned time blocking um, I've only recently started doing it and I, and I forget where I, where I referenced it, but there is um, there is good research to show that when you are doing something consistently, like a repeated action consistently, you get better at it in that moment, in that time frame. And it's kind of silly, but let's go back to the kitchen sink. So I have started with dishes to put all of my silverware in a pile, to put all my bowls in a pile, to put all my cups in a pile, and then attack those piles individually rather than just whatever comes to the hand, which was what I used to do. And I have noticed anecdotally that I, I clean the dishes faster. It's like, wow, this is a nice life hack. And so now it's like, where else can I apply this? And so when it comes to emails, I should be doing all my emails in this time time frame if it's writing code i should be writing all my code that i need in this time frame rather than just ad hoc on when i when i need it and so th th those are other aspects how I, that i could employ these time blocking um, time blocking in general is a level of organization that i'm just have yet to really reach in planning but that's something that i already see benefits of i um have done different versions of time blocking before and for me what has worked the most is when I time block and I and I separate uh, mental with physical activities. So like right before this podcast, I went on a run. I did all my physical stuff. I got my body moving because I knew that I'd be sitting here. And if, if sometimes if I don't time block it that way, I and I'm doing the same type of activity too long, I get antsy. I get um, I get irritated <laughs> and I get depleted. So uh, yeah, time blocking, changing the the context that's really helpful, uh, Brian. Thank you for sharing and being so vulnerable with your um, perceived disorganization because I've seen you and I think you're more organized. Well, you know, I think you were actually pretty, pretty um, fair today. I've heard you beat yourself up over your organization and, and today you didn't. You, I, I think it, is, it was very insightful to hear you be very specific about what those things are. And we were able to get to the core like, hey, if you had a system that would yeah. help. And not to make it a, a commercial for Team 212, but it is. Team 212 yeah. is the system that actually helped me accomplish more goals than anything before. Because what I would do is I would set a goal and I would make a plan and I did track this stuff and I would make progress. But when things got hard, I would stop. And that's because I had nobody to go to, to for encouragement and support. And with Team 212, that has been something that's really been helpful for me. And you being on my team, uh, that helps me. So you help me stay organized. You help me stay committed to my goals. And thank you, Brian. Yeah. Thank you. The, additionally, that, that accountability, just, just to, to, for someone to hear out what you want to do, not limit it with immediately with like, oh, you can't do that. Um, but to instead provide encouragement and support and even sometimes the how along the way. And if, and if you miss it, they don't accept like an excuse. It's just like, oh, okay, well, you know, stand back up and, 
what 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 could you change moving forwards? And so, not often do you have people who will um, answer and respond to your goals and your 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 shortfalls in that way. So many times we we're just wanting to be nice with each other, you know, just kind of accept some mediocrity, and and that's that 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 can be fun at times, but not when you're really wanting to change uh, what what's going on right now in your life. And so um, that accountability is big for me, and, and it remains to be. Yeah. So thank you. Absolutely. Transformation, you're welcome. And transformation does require uh, some action. Yeah. Uh, so, so one of the other things I was going to say is next week, our topic is the power of systems. So I, I'm going to invite you, Brian. I don't know what your schedule looks like, but here publicly, I'm going to invite you to come back. We have another, we have a, we have a, pulled. <laughs> Jeff will be back. We have a guest. And so we'll go, we'll dig deep into the power of systems, what systems have worked for us and how to create your own systems. Because at the end of the day, everybody has a system and then you start using it and something doesn't work. But when you create your own system, you can just change it on the fly. So, yeah. All right, everybody. Yeah. Every Tuesday, uh, come back. We'll provide tips, tricks, and accountability for you to accomplish your goals. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, everybody watching live. See you next week.